does. Um, we're going to start with number three. Does everyone, did anyone come up with uh, anything? Were they thinking about it last week? Um, Josh already mentioned it. Uh, he talked to Brian's friend. He does some type of construction. I think a lot of dirt work, is it? Yeah, mainly? It's in like uh, sewer storm drains and uh, manhole. Yeah. Uh, Josh asked, he said, if he goes, tries this, doesn't like it or doesn't work out, is he welcome back? And I said, yes, if you leave on good terms, uh, you're welcome back. So. I uh, appreciate you thinking about that, reaching out to Andrew, and uh, if any of you other guys have anything that's not lawn care or is lawn care and you want to talk about it with me and Brian, let's do it. Um, you mind if I go off of that one? Is that the, is that the, the topic that you're going off of uh, kind of in relation to the video? Is that the last topic that's kind of in relation to that as far as the improving your skills and, and yeah, asking yeah, for yeah. wealth and stuff like yeah. that? So if, any of y'all saw that in the group chat? I know a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff goes in that chat. Um, but this one, did y'all see that video or see J Jeremy posted the YouTube uh, Mike's video? Mm -hmm. And he goes in, he's talking specifically to the frontline staff, which is, you know, y'all in this room. Um, and, he's, and Mike really cares about it just like we do. As far as like he tracks things in his business, you know, he's, he's elevated himself to where he is, uh, you see him on the media, but he's he's controlling all of his assets from you know thirty thousand feet. He's got other people managing and handling. He really loves tracking how many people go from frontline to uh, a franchisee, or how many people go from you know franchisee to a millionaire. He loves seeing that growth, and that's what we're all about too, right? You know, as far as the second line in our mission is to help increase uh, our team members' skills and financial future. So we're real big on that. In that video, there was like three main values that if you watch it in separate clips, um, he talks about. And the number one thing is he says, okay, everyone, every, I, show of hands, who doesn't want to make any more money than they make right now? All right, good. So everybody wants to make more money, right? <laughs> so in order to do that in the free world, in the free market, you have to provide more value, right? All right. so. He talks about this, your number one biggest asset is yourself. As far as like how you can get the most amount of return, you're living in that body. What's inside your head, what you can do with your hands is how you can make the most amount of money. It's not crypto, it's not some um, type of new, you know, NFT or anything like that. That is gambling at this point. Yeah, people made tons of money doing it. People make tons of money at the back rat table. But what doesn't get, get shown is the people that lose money. And that's about 95% of those same type of people. 95% of people in, involved in meme stock or crypto or NFTs lose their ass. Same thing on the back right table. You only see the wins. But what you can do, number one, is what everyone should do, is improve your skills. And you're like, okay, how do you do that? Well, as frontline team members, you can look at how to improve your skills inside this organization to become a general manager, to use the uh, two years here to get your own franchise, do it on yourself. Or like, uh, like Josh just did, let's go, okay, where do I wanna go? He's interested in using big machinery to move tons of dirt. He's like, what do I gotta do? Well, you gotta get in somewhere first, right? Then you gotta learn those skills. When he learns those skills, Andrew's gonna show him how to become an operator. So you go from being field field um, team, uh, digging out the pipe, learning that stuff, the better you get at that. And that's, that, that's like the thing, all right? As a field team, and Jeremy is a testament to this. He came in when this company was completely structured differently, right? He was a, a second man on a truck. He was called a, a, a lawn tech. He's the guy using the weed eater. We can parallel this to Josh, he's gonna pick up a shovel, right? And everybody in this room can attest it's not, it doesn't make you the happiest. It doesn't give you the warm and fuzzies, right? But what you have on your side is an advantage of being, being frontline team member is everyone else doesn't give a shit. Most people don't. So how do you show yourself different? You give a shit. Every single day and you do it with a smile on your face, no matter how you feel on the inside. Now that's easy to do. You don't have to be, a, be extremely intelligent. You know, it's not, I'm sorry, it's not, it's not, um, it's not complicated, right? It's simple but it's hard. 
It's hard to put that smile on the face when you're digging in a, in a, in a damn trench and it's 40 something degrees outside. But if you do it, you're gonna be different than every single person. Just like when Jeremy picked up that weed eater, everyone else in my organization gave zero shits. Negative shits if, if possible. And well, there was one guy who really gave negative shits. Yeah. We cut the grass now. A girl. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Honor at work with her. Uh, it was rough. Uh, but that's, that's the big difference you can make as frontline everywhere in the United States. And it makes a huge difference. You don't just do it for three days. You don't just do it for three months. You do it for three damn years and you will get noticed and you will move up. If, with, if that company's going anywhere, you're going with them. Um, so that's, that's the number one value. And then it can get more complicated as you, as you want to move up, right? You get, you get to be an operator. You're like, you know, Andrew's been an operator for like 10 years. The way to him move up now is him take courses to get certified, to get his contractor's license, to learn a little bit about, about leadership, to, to dust off that, that rocky edge and be a leader. You know, you can, you can make leaps and bounds in the field, a little rough around the edges. You know, your vocabulary is a little different. You maybe not speak your emotions out in fluid sentences, but you know, you can move your way up. But anyways, that's his next step. Number two, to building your wealth. Again, simple, difficult to do in practice. Spend less money than you make. Take that money, put it into a passive investment that is safe. And that would be like an ETF, investing in um, an IRA, which is a tax advantaged account. It grows interest free until you pull it out at retirement, which is, you know, 65 or whatever age um, you can get retirement. And it grows, you can put, you can put hundred bucks um, a month in it if you want to, right? There's uh, charts on there. If you max it out, which is six thousand dollars a year, five hundred bucks a month, but you start with fifty bucks a month if you want to. In forty years, or some of y'all a little older, in thirty years, thirty-five years, when you're sixty-five, oh, small investment will be a million to two million dollars. And I mean, that's you're talking about money in one hundred and fifty to two hundred thousand, money out million million to two million depending on how old you are like the youngest guy in here is what 19. if you did that and you were like you know what i don't i got 500 dollars to put in when you turn 65 you'll have like 1.8 million dollars you know so that's uh that's the the two things there was a third one and i lost it uh but those are the two things in the video can you think of the the third one that i was I'm thinking working, of I'm working, I'm keep going. but so those are the as far as like what what impact I like small impact I would like to be in y'all's future is how to increase your skills going from field team. But then when you get those increased skills and you get some money in your pocket, uh, be able to use that money wisely and not just spend the extra money that you get. Because there's people out there making millions of dollars a year that will be broke by the time they're 65. So it's not just about how much money you make, although that's you know, that, that definitely accelerates it. You want to increase that too, but you also want to curb that spending, you know, because if you can save, you know, 25% of your income, you can get to retirement and be able to enjoy your life. And I know like the traditional age might be thinking we are living longer. Like my, my, uh, father-in-law, we just celebrated his 65th birthday. He rides motorcycles. He lifts weights. He's a big old dude. He, he has full, you know, like, and he's retired. He's he's living life. So 65 really ain't that bad, especially nowadays if you're going to live another 20 years. Um, if you can hold off at 65, it's probably wise. Otherwise, you're going to have to get a job. <laughs> but and that, that video will get you fired up um, for sure. It's a really good watch. So I recommend <coughs> taking the hour and watching it. Uh, thanks for that, Brian. Um, also, back to Brian, I know we made 54 grand total between July and August. Uh, in this type of business, a lot of your money is spent or you're like reinvesting back in the business January, February, March, April, May. And then in the middle of summer, we're in the swing of things, a lot of the expenses, upfront expenses are paid for. And so we made 54,000 between those two months. And then we're at 120, we ended at 122, I think. Yeah, so that was a 16. 16? Yeah. Yeah, let's go. Yeah. So, uh, I started here five years ago, uh, always hearing the word profit, but never saw it, uh, neither did Brian. We did have one year uh, where we made a decent amount of money, but I think it was just me and one other guy working here. 
Uh, we were very efficient because I gave a shit, and therefore we went out there and knocked out lists and called it a day. We didn't hang out at the gas station like the last guy. We didn't. Um, and I was literally, in the field literally too. just. Huh? And I was in the field too. Okay. So spray him. Yeah. Spray him. So um, it's finally paying off, and uh, we can't wait to uh, do this again with our next locations and hopefully put more money in your guys' pockets. Um, and then we will also, uh, Q4, uh, do profit share with the team. That's 10% of, of what we made the last three months of the year. Uh, it'll be split between everybody. Um, next year, we are going to, this you'd have to really take the time to come and look at it, but I'll hit the highlights. Um, we're gonna add two more mowers, uh, so that way we have two dedicated backups at all times, not just one. Uh, we're gonna have a 30 inch on every single truck with like uh, the 21s as backups. Um, Matthew will be starting March, probably. March 1st. March 1st, uh, we'll have our second legit location, so his truck will have an 803 number on it. Um, yeah, Gabe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, we'll have that, and then the Hepsima's already in our territory, so we're going to take uh, part of the money I made from selling my house and some of Brian's savings, and we're going to um, kind of pump up Hepsima with marketing, and so that way we'll probably have it worked in North Augusta, door hangers, targeted marking. Um, sending stuff in the mail and we got it as Matthew could tell and any of the other guys that have been over there we keep getting more and more yards there so uh, we're gonna try and do the same thing in Hepzibah and then after that uh, have a Hepzibah location in 2024 uh, one thing I'm excited for if you see racks six thousand dollars we're gonna spend on racks every single truck is gonna be uh, like P8 and it's, everything's gonna have a rack everything's gonna have a place to go so that'll save on damaging equipment and you won't have to worry about all your stuff being thrown together. Um, I think those are the highlights from it. Two extra mowers, an extra location, racks on everything, which I'm personally excited about. Uh, we're gonna get rid of a trailer and we're gonna add ramp racks to uh, two other trucks. Uh, so we're gonna slowly get rid of trailers Anything you want to touch on that, Bruiser? Um, yeah. So, one great opportunity as far as we're talking about growth and how to, for those of y'all, if you like Augusta, like the model, you like lawn care, the way, and you know, we've said it before, but always like to be that repetitive bug in y'all's ear. Hepsiba, like Jeremy said, will be its own. Uh, we're going to separate it. We're going to use uh, that opportunity to. Uh, going to start one of Jeremy's investments. He's going to go 50-50 with me on that location, but it will start technically in the franchise system. Um, just like Matthews in March, it'll be March, 2024. So all from now, from now until, and I don't have the board up yet. I got I'm going to do that this week. Get a board. It's called the general manager board. So we're adding two locations a year for now until we get enough capital to add more each year. So 2024, we'll have Hepzibah and most likely Aiken, or if we go and, and check out that Graniteville actually can, can have that capacity, we might do Graniteville first, um, just because it's closer. So we'll have those two locations. It'll be a running, a race this time. Um, you know, we learn, we learn, learn things and what, what, what it really needs to be, if there's going to be two a year, is be a board up there. We've got a... I've handed out the syllabus, you know, things that we're gonna try to do and we'll end up making it better by learning from GMs that go through it. We've got the uh, syllabus for those that are interested in the program so that we can get you ready for it by the time. And so 2024 is up in the running for anybody that wants to be interested in it. We can meet monthly to talk about things that uh, I believe you need to do, audible books you need to read, uh, things you need to start thinking about and learning. And, and then just specifically, what do you need to do, whether it be technical skills, uh, verbal skills, sh you know, showing up on time, whatever it is, uh, which y'all do great on, on that for the most part. Um, if you're interested in it, you know, we need to be having meetings and talking about it because November 1st, 2023, so a year from now, year and a month, 
uh, we will go ahead and nominate and uh, out of whoever's interested, say, hey, y'all will be the uh, the GMs. Y'all y'all want out uh, starting March first. That way we can get you ready. Hey, Matthew's going to um, training. Tr yeah training in February because the slots book up. So you know we get you ready for training and get get you in gear. So if anybody's interested, please you know approach me, let me know, and we can get you get you going and get you ready for it. Uh, I've had a couple phone calls uh, about like, hey, this grass really isn't growing. What should I do? Well, unless the customer mm -hmm. is one that cancels service, we're not going to because that's how we make money and you guys make money by every single yard that we get to do. So uh, if it is going dormant and it's not actively growing, uh, let's run the mower over it, but we're not concerned with taking a hide off, just putting some lines on it. And also this time of the year, uh, if it is not growing much, uh, let's make sure we get, we're responsible for the leaves, sticks and pine cones on the grass itself. So if there's not much to mow, uh, put some lines on it, but focus on getting that debris off the turf. I wanted to mention that to everyone. And last but not least, uh, let's make sure we check all our fluids and the mower oil. Anybody, anybody got anything, any questions? A lot of information this morning. I would like to give a little round of applause to Josh for going out there and uh, finding, finding what he wants to do, something he's interested in, and going out there and making it happen. Because you know, it may sound simple, but it's difficult and it's challenging to do anything new. You know, put yourself out there as the new guy again, learn new skills, and even just to make that phone call, right? Because the information's out there, the opportunities are out there, but what's in between you and those opportunities is is fear, anticipation, not knowing what, what the hell it, it, it entails, and leaving your comfort zone. And that's not, you know, as men, we, we don't talk about it, but that shit's hard. You got, you got anxious feelings running through you, and um, I support you, man. And um, I'm glad, I'm glad, I wanted you to do it no matter what, but I'm glad you, you're, you know, I got a little bit of connection so I can know how you're doing. Yeah. And, uh, but yeah, feel free to keep into contact and um, yeah. definitely got a, you know, a spot here if anything happens. But I hope it doesn't. I hope you're out there riding one of them big old massive uh, things that, that will flatten people. <laughs> um, I've got to go get some transmission fluid. I think, Will, I know you got to clean up. I'm not sure what all is involved, but uh, everyone, make sure you have what you need uh, before you leave so you're not turning right back around. Let's go. All right, let's get it. All right.